leave. Okay, there's no, there's nowhere to go. And Rabbi Yisrael sees these Jews, he's living in Warsaw at the time because he himself is uh, forced to move here. And he sees the pain and he composes a song which is known in Mojits as the Nigun of the Homeless, where he sort of combines, on the one hand, the tragedy, the sadness of the tragedy, on the other hand, trying to give the, the, the people some sort of optimism. So the song goes from like very, sort of very sort of sad and slow to sort of very chirpy and fast. And uh, it's, it's again, within Hasidei Mojit, it's probably one of the most famous of the Nigunim. Um, and he goes like this, I'm just singing a little bit of it. Um, he goes like this. <coughs> oh, my cough. <coughs> Etc. Etc. So it goes from this sort of very um, sad, if you like, chazonish sort of like movement to like the sort of like this like fast movement. And he um, he was a master, as were all the rebbers of music, and composed many many nigunim. Of course, I mentioned his son of Shol Yedidia. There's a very famous um, song that in Moji it's called uh, the word Prok Yatanach Mikum from Yari Bon, mm-hmm. which speaks about Gulan Galut. And Rashal Yudidu, when he um, when he moves to Vilna, he uh, Vilna, as you know, was not a very Hasidic place. A lot of misnagim there, but he actually has tishim in Vilna. A lot of people come, and he composes a song. And he says in 1941, "This is Shira Gula. This is going to be the song of the redemption of the Gula of Am Israel." One of the things that um, I don't know if you ever thought about, but I'm sure you've thought about it in, in the terms of your own life, is perspective. So when we are um, in on the moment where we're in 1940, nobody ever believed that the war would go into 1945. In 1939, okay, in November, people thought it was going to be over in a month or two months. In 1941, when the Remy Mimojits, okay, escapes to Vilna, he was convinced that, you know, a few months will be over. And he was composing Shira Gula. Yeah. And of course, he went on till um, 1945. Um, final words about uh, Mojitz, famous stories told about the son of Mojitz, when he was, um, he was elderly and sick, he had diabetes and he had, needed to have his leg amputated. So he um, travels to Germany, to Berlin, he's a famous um, German doctor, the Jewish doctor, who is a uh, very, very famous, um, uh, what do you call it? do the operation. Uh, oh, surgeon. Surgeon, sorry. Uh, it's a complicated word. Um, and he, uh, he's going to perform the operation. And uh, they come to prepare him for the operation. Anesthetic, etc. And he says, no anesthetic. No anesthetic. The doctor says, says, I can't perform an operation with anesthetic. That would be fine. And the story is told that uh, the Rebbe Mojitz um, is on the in the operation theatre, goes through the whole operation without an anaesthetic, a leg amputation, and at the same time, uh, he composes a nigun, a nigun to the wo- words of Ela Esker Vayema from Nila Yom wow. Kippur, and it has 42 movements, that nigun, and it's a very famous 
um, Nigun in, in a word of Mojit that I think there are about three or four people who actually know how to sing it. It's so complicated. And he said afterwards, I didn't feel anything. He didn't feel anything. He was so engrossed or concentrated in, in his Nigun that he didn't feel anything at all. Okay. Sorry? On the way warm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. okay, the Kevin, Ms. Molly David. Okay. Uh, just, just one yeah. final thing. What's interesting about uh, Mojits, and you may not know this in general, a lot of the Hasidiyot, when they came to Israel, where did they set up their centers? Not be before B'nai Brak. Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv. Yeah. Tel Aviv. And Mojitz uh, was in Rehov Shenkin, Tel Aviv. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and with the last of all the Hasidiyot to move to B'nai Brak, they moved. Um, but they were very, there was a very, very strong Kesha between um, B'nai Akiva and Mojitz. And in uh, all the Bnei Kiva in Tel Aviv, in Slif Merkaz, they used to go to Sudash Shishit in Mojit. They used to, uh, uh, to sing, sing the Nigunim, sing with the, sing with the uh, Bule. And, um, and a lot of, to this day, there were quite a few um, people who would, you know, important people in the religious science world are very, very close to the Red and to, to the world of Mojit. So, in honor of Abu Surah, and that's what we're saying, we're going to we'll sing now. Darren suggests we're going to sing. Ms. Mola David, not the one I sang with the famous Ms. Mola David, and um, before we move out. Ms. Mola David.